Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you so much for joining me today. So, as you can see, I seem to have accumulated a ridiculous amount of MIDI keyboard controllers, but this does present an excellent opportunity to discuss the differences between these and perhaps give you some advice on choosing the optimum size of MIDI controller for you. 25 keys, 49, 61, 88 and so on. And we'll also discuss some of the differences in the features and things that you should keep in mind when you're choosing a MIDI controller for yourself. And then as an extra bonus, right back here, we have a pretty high-end flagship MIDI controller from Novation. I haven't unboxed it or looked at it myself. This one sort of turned up out of the blue. So we'll do a little mini unboxing of this as well and take a quick look at some of the features. Does that sound like fun? Well, let's get started. Okay, so if I clear a little bit of space here, we'll remove these ones for the time being, and we'll take a look at one of the keyboard sizes that is extremely popular right now with mobile musicians because of its compactness. We'll take a look at this one. I've already unboxed it before. This is the Launch Key 25, but I'm going to open this right now, quickly. I did a full uh, unboxing where we talked about the features, hooked it up to Ableton Live, and actually made a little track together. So if you want more information about this, I recommend you watch that video. I'll leave, of course, links in the description. So let's talk about this category of keyboard. As I said, extremely popular, 25 keys, that's two octaves. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a look. Okay, so this particular 25 key model is by Novation. It's their very latest launch key with very tight integration to Ableton for launching clips with these pads, for example, in the session view. If you're interested in this, then go ahead and check my video. Or if you want even more details, check videos like uh, Bow Beats and Loop Pop and so on have produced. But this, uh, the strength in this size MIDI keyboard is its compactness, of course. Plenty of room if you're on a smaller desk for your keyboard, your mouse and so on. It can get a little bit awkward as you start going up in size with fitting everything onto your desk. But for me, what I would say about the 25 is fantastic for playing one-handedly. If you want to do a synth lead or uh, play a bass line in or play some chords in, but you can only really do one at a time. This is far too cramped for me anyway, to play two hands at the same time. You can just about do it if you're in the key of C. Obviously, if you're in the key of B flat, you're not gonna get down there. So you really are restricted to playing in the key of C with something like this. And it's a little bit too cramped to play with two hands. And when I do my composing and music production, I do like to use two hands at the same time. So I can experiment with different chords with my right hand, whilst at the same time playing bass notes with my left. That's what works out best for me anyway. But this is popular because of its compact size, also relatively cheap compared to larger models. And if it's something you want to take with you in your rucksack, if you're doing a gig somewhere or jamming with a friend or something, then certainly having a compact unit like this is a big advantage. But if you, like me, feel that this is a little bit cramped, then we can step up to a 49 note keyboard. Then we also have keyboards with mini keys. Let's talk about that. So I don't currently have a MIDI controller keyboard with mini keys, but I've played several synthesizers over the last few months and years that do have mini keys. So I'll play some B-roll footage of that for you right now. Many guys hate mini keys, but I actually find them not too bad myself. I can adapt to any size of keyboard fairly quickly, really, so I'm fortunate in that way. So they don't bother me too much, but they do take a little bit more concentration and accuracy to play them well. However, some of these keyboards are cheaply made with flimsy feeling keys and that's certainly something I don't like. So if you do get the opportunity to try before you buy, then I recommend you do so. But 
they do have their advantages. For me, I would much rather have, say, 37 mini keys, which would probably fit in about the same space as this, than 25 full-size keys. Yes, for me, I think that's a good trade-off. I'd rather have smaller keys and more of them than full-size keys and fewer. I think you know what I mean. So that's certainly a good option. And I know that Arturia makes some extremely popular compact MIDI controllers that are quite affordable with mini keys that you see all over YouTube. And that's a keyboard I'd like to check out myself in the future. So that's certainly a really good option as well if you're short of space. Okay then, let's step up to 49. And I have a couple of 49 keyboard controllers, 49 keys. So let's pull up two of them at the same time here. Move that out of the way. So the first one I'm showing you here is my Roland A49. And then really confusingly, we have a Native Instruments Complete A49. Yes, these have exactly the same model number. Let's plug this one in so we can have some pretty lights. Okay, I've lined these up and spotted something quite interesting. Let me see if I can show this to you. If I get the right angle here. Maybe it's not going to come across on the camera and I don't have a wide angle lens yet for this new camera setup. So we're going to have to take this for what it is. Okay, the interesting thing that struck me is both of these are 49 note controllers. However, the Roland is quite a lot narrower. So the keys on this one are narrower and smaller than they are on the NI. Another thing that I've noticed about these two is the keyboard action does feel much higher quality on the complete controller here than on the Roland, even though Roland do market this as having very professional, nice feeling keys. And they are okay, but the overall quality of this one, the feeling of plasticiness, plasticiness is, uh, makes it feel quite a lot inferior to the NI, which has a really sturdy feel with actually a really lovely key bed for the price. So that's something to consider when buying a MIDI keyboard for sure, how nice the keys feel to you. For me, that's the number one most important decision perhaps. Another thing to consider, and you can clearly see the difference between these two, is the number of controllers, knobs, sliders and buttons. This one has eight endless rotaries that feel really nice to the touch, and a plethora of other buttons and controls. Both have pitch bend and mod wheels, although the Roland does it with their traditional stick, left and right for pitch bend, up and down for modulation. But this one only has two knobs. So this one is much better for controlling more complicated synthesizers in your DAW, Digital Audio Workstation software. So the number of controllers is something to think about when you're making a decision. And when we get on to the more advanced controllers in a second, like this one over here that we'll be unboxing, this one is festooned with pads, buttons, sliders and knobs, as was in fact, if I very carefully place this one up, you can also see the difference here with the number of controls that was available on the Launch Key 25. This one also has eight knobs here as well. And if you step up to the Launch Key 49, you get eight sliders, which are really good for controlling parameters in your recording software, such as the level of the faders in the mixer and so on. So yeah, that's something to consider what kind of control panels you want. If you're mainly playing just piano sounds, uh, a nice sample library from Native Instruments perhaps, then the number of controls aren't as important. But it's certainly nice to have. So I think that covers the 49, but what I will say about the note range here, you've got one, two, three, four octaves, and this for me is the ideal size. For me personally, it's the ideal compromise between compact size on your desk, there still is space for the keyboard and mouse besides, if you're using this in front of the computer on a desk, it works out really, really well. And 49 keys is plenty for playing most simple stuff in with two hands. I can play bass lines and chords with my right hand, right hand at the same time as I'm sketching out an idea for a composition. I in fact use this setup of 49 for practicing classical piano pieces at the moment. 
It's okay, it's a little bit cramped and you have to be creative with your left hand to jump up an octave from time to time. Same thing with your right to jump down or use the octave up and down buttons. That's an interesting point. Even if you have a shorter number of keys, you can still access the entire range of a piano, 88 notes, by using the octave up and down. So there you go. That for me is a pretty sweet spot for MIDI controllers. Let's now take a look at this interesting Novation SL61 Mark III, which I think was sent to me by mistake. Let's talk about that. Okay, if we remove these and I'll do a quick unboxing for you. So as I said, I felt that the 25 key launch key was a little bit cramped for me. Uh, Novation did send that to me to demonstrate when they launched the product a month or two ago. Yep, that's a, it was a new release. And I asked them if I could trade up for the 61 or 49 key launch key. But apparently they sent me this one by mistake. This is their flagship 61 SL Mark III version. Uh, the centerpiece for all your hardware and seamless DAW control. This is much more advanced and much more expensive than the launch key. So I guess I got lucky this time. Now I know that a lot of you enjoy these unboxings as much as I do. So we can just take a quick look at the, at the features on the box. You would probably hate me if we didn't do this. Some of you anyway. So this one is uh, quite advanced in that you can connect to... Uh, CV equipped uh, equipment, CV equipped equipment, such as Eurorack modules. So it's got the CV, that's like a voltage output, gate, mod, and MIDI hardware control as well. It's got MIDI outputs, which some of your MIDI controller keyboards don't have. That's something to mention. They're normally just uh, USB MIDI. But uh, if that's important to you, if you want to control other hardware synthesizers, you might need to check if the one you're thinking of buying has MIDI output on those round DIN sockets. Internal 8-track pattern-based sequencer. That's nice if you're controlling external hardware synthesizers that don't have sequencers. For me, not so interesting because I tend to do that on the computer. Easily integrate hardware with your DAW. Uh, interesting, not sure what they mean about that. The perfect keyboard controller for Ableton Live. Yes, Novation, I think, are the leaders in making hardware controllers for Ableton. Let's take a look at the back. Absolute hardware control. Uh, MIDI CV gate synths can be integrated with this easily. The perfect controller for Ableton Live. We talked about that. Customizable templates, I suppose, for different softwares. It will work with other DAWs than Ableton. I use Reaper and also Propelheads Reason. They're called Reason Studios now. Comprehensive connectivity, yes, easily integrate hardware with your DW pads. We'll take a look at those in a second. One routable clock for the whole system. That's to keep everything in sync, presumably. The eight track pattern sequencer, arpeggiator as well, which I probably won't use. LED feedback. This thing will light up in quite a pretty way, I'm led to believe. Keys for the player. Take a look at this. The SL Mark III boasts our finest, most playable and expressive synth-style semi-weighted keybed with a spring action, well that's fairly typical, and our highest scan rate, nice, all tuned to the needs of the experienced player. Well, I guess that's me, I've been doing this for over 40 years. At least they didn't say professional, like uh, most companies say, because that would rule me out. It's got aftertouch too, really nice. I don't have any other keyboards with aftertouch. I'll explain what that is when we got this set up. So this is actually quite exciting to me. There's nothing quite as much fun as unboxing a new synth or keyboard on a rainy Saturday afternoon. So let's do this now. And this will just be a very brief unboxing guys. But if there's enough people interested, then we can do a more comprehensive review in the future but i really want to try and just focus today on a simple buying advice and what kind of size keyboard controller to choose because it's not easy and i do get a lot of emails from people wondering and asking me this exact question and by the way 
This has a very solid feeling to it and quite a lot of weight as well. As soon as I received the box, I knew something was up. I was expecting the lightweight launch key and got this extremely heavy box. So I knew something was up there. And it ended up being this instead. So let's just... Um, Try that off. Move it over there. I'm being as quick as I can. Bear with me. Yes, this is a very handsome beast. I know I always say that, but that's part of the tradition of this channel yes wow that is elegant actually let's pull out this foam strip yes i think we will have to do a separate video on this one but immediately i can see we have an array of pads 16 of them there lots and lots of buttons no less than five screens no idea what all these buttons do and some faders here as well oh and knobs here on the top endless rotaries so this is pretty comprehensively equipped. Pitch bend mod wheel down there. And the keys, yeah, do feel good. My acid test for keys, checking the quality of a key bed, is to play them up towards the back of the full board. This is called the full board back here on a piano. And see how easy they are to depress at the backs of the keys. These ones are actually really good. And they bottom out with a, quite a nice feeling. And that's the aftertouch. So aftertouch, guys, is when uh, these are touch responsive. Nearly all MIDI controller keyboards are. So they respond to how quickly, hard you press the keys. But then if you hold a key down and then depress it, that activates aftertouch. I can hear it here kicking in like a slight click. And you can use that to control some parameters on your synthesizer, making it more expressive to play. Yeah. It's a feature normally found on more high-end synthesizers and keyboard controllers, so really glad to have it here. And here's your Ableton controls for switching up and down through the session view to select clips to launch right here. I did a video all about this when we demonstrated the launch key, so check that out if you're interested. But this is 61 keys, so now we have an extra octave compared to the 49. So this is really luxurious, plenty of luxurious Plenty of space here for playing even quite advanced parts. Yeah, that's nice. Let's plug it in. Actually, before doing that, there's one more thing to consider when purchasing a MIDI keyboard controller, and that's the connectivity. Let's take a look at what this one has to offer. So you'll always have USB. I'm really glad to see it's a full-size USB connector as well, not a flimsy micro mini or USB-C or anything like this. It's also got power. So you could power this up separately, although most MIDI controllers power over USB. A nice power switch as well. This one has MIDI in, out, and through, which is very unusual. MIDI out is a useful feature if you want to control hardware synthesizers. This is our pedal inputs as well. That's something that differentiates different controllers. This one you can have sustain, expression, and another foot switch. That's pretty generous. But you definitely want at least a sustain pedal if you're playing piano patches. And here are your CV inputs, which is rather unusual. I think it's only Novation and Arturia that offer these as well. And this is what you need if you're controlling uh, like hardware Eurorack modules, like a Eurorack setup that accepts CV inputs. This is your clock out as well. I've balanced this very precariously to show you this lovely green rubber foot on the bottom. That's interesting. Okay, let's fire it up, see what it looks like. And we can also see if this one is powered by USB. There's such a lot of lights, LEDs and control panels. I'm wondering if you need to ex power it externally. Okay, so it didn't power up over the USB, which is a bit of a shame. I'm a bit disappointed about that because that's super convenient if you can just plug it in to your computer and it powers up. Um, although it may, might be something to do with my USB hub. I'll have to look into that. If there's any SL61 owners watching, 
and please uh, let, let me know about that. I'll check the manual as well later. Obviously, I haven't had time to do that now. But there is a power supply included, so let's find a spare outlet and plug this in. And I hope I didn't lose any footage, because I just saw my camera stopped recording after 29 minutes and 59 seconds. So, uh, if I missed something, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, so now it's come into life. I must admit, that's a bit of a bummer though. I got used to the convenience of USB powered MIDI controllers. It's a bit of a pain having to find the power supply and connect it to the wall. So I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, that's the advantage, I guess, of the launch key. But this is a very pretty thing when you fire it up for sure. Take a look at that. I'm not sure how well it's coming over on camera. But there are some very pretty lights along the front here. And these have some function as well. I think it's used when you're playing with arpeggiators, the step sequencer and so on. And they also flash when you play them. This will be pretty cool for my demonstrations. Yeah, very nice feeling keyboard, no doubt about that. And then we have these screens as well. Yeah, I have to admit this keyboard has a lot of functions and features that I will never use. I don't have any Euro rack, Euro rack equipment, nor will I ever, I don't think. And I won't be using the advanced features of this, like the pattern sequencer or anything either. So a bit overkill perhaps for my needs. But look at that, I've not seen a screen, or not seen a synthesizer with five screens before. How awesome is that? Really nice graphics and really nice screens as well for that matter. Look at that. But anyway, if we try to stay on topic, then we've now explored, and I've showed you, what a 61 note keyboard controller looks like. And if you have the space in your studio and you want the luxury of 61 keys, then this is the way to go. So the next step up would be 88 keys. There is 73 note synths, digital pianos available on the market, but I don't think there are any 73 key. That would be a, basically another octave onto here. I don't think there are any 63 key MIDI controllers. So the next step up would be 88. I don't have an 88 with me at the moment, but I have recently reviewed 88s from M Audio and from Roland, so I can show you some B-roll of that right now. It's the M Audio Hammer 88, and today we'll unbox it and see how it lives up to my expectations for an 88 note weighted MIDI keyboard controller. Yep, all right, there we go. Well done M Audio, thank you. But I'm very happy to see that M Audio haven't skimped here at all, as far as I can see. We have a nice metal panel that wraps all the way around the back there. There's certainly no creaking or flexing or horrible bendy plastic here. So when I borrowed the Roland Jupiter XM from the very nice people at Roland, they asked me if I would like to borrow this A88 Mark II MIDI controller that they've just released. But I wasn't sure, to be honest, for a couple of reasons. So when you step up to an 88, then you get the same number of keys as a concert grand piano, which is really awesome. It's nothing quite like having all those notes spread out in front of you. Another thing is that some sample libraries and more sophisticated synthesizers perhaps have special key switches. Some of the very lowest notes can trigger or switch between various settings or articulations on a sample library, for example. So that's quite nice to have, otherwise you'll be going up and down with your octave keys to access those notes. Of course, if you're playing more advanced jazz, classical, then 88 notes 
it's really the way to go. The other thing is, when you go up from 61 like this to 88, you typically switch from synth action keys, which are these very light, unweighted keys. Although Innovation called them semi-weighted, but they don't have any resistance really. When you step up to 88, you get more realistic piano feeling keys, usually weighted, so they are harder to push down and much more like a real piano. In fact, some of the models even have the simulated piano uh, hammer effects. You, know, that you can actually feel the hammer flying forward to give you the exact same feeling or as close as you can get to playing an acoustic grand piano or upright piano. Now that's something that's really nice when you're trying to expressively play an acoustic piano patch or an electric piano patch. However, there are disadvantages as well. Personally, I don't really like the feel of weighted keys when you're playing fast punchy bass lines or synth leads or even string pads and stuff. Definitely not drums, it doesn't work at all because for me it's more difficult to get the timing accurate. So although weighted keys are great for piano, I don't find them very enjoyable really for other categories of sounds where I feel this kind of keyboard is actually much better. Say for organ for example, this is so much more fun and enjoyable than trying to play organ on a weighted keyboard action, which feels like you're playing an organ in treacle or something. Let's bring in the A49 and talk about one other thing. Another really important thing to keep in mind when you're choosing a MIDI controller is what software it comes bundled with. Native Instruments are one of the leading manufacturers of software synthesizers, uh, sample libraries and so on. And they do provide a really nice bundle with their MIDI controllers. I don't remember exactly what you get and it does change a little bit from time to time. So check the net there, check the internet, their website to see what applies right now. But you normally get a selection of their very high end synthesizers, maybe even a piano sample library, lots of loops, samples, some of their expansion packs to get you started, plus their Machina DAW software. So I think Native Instruments are class leading when it comes to software bundles. Also Arturia are very good, but check that out because what I found when I totaled up the cost of the software that comes free when you buy the MIDI controller, it's actually worth more than the MIDI controller. So you can think of it a little bit like you're getting the MIDI controller for free when you buy their software bundle. However you want to look at it really, but it certainly is quite an attractive deal. If we contrast it with the Roland, you get very little included software, not really much added value there. I did reach out to my followers on Twitter and also my friends over on our Discord community to ask what topics they think are important when choosing a MIDI controller, just so that I don't forget anything. So here's what we'll do. I'll play you a little bit of a compilation of me playing music on some of these various MIDI controllers. And at the same time, we'll throw up the points that they raised, because I'm sure I've probably forgotten to say something, even though it feels like I've said too much.
Whew, well, that was quite the ride. We covered a lot of ground in this video. I hope you found it interesting, entertaining, and not too boring. But we covered a lot of MIDI controllers here, unboxed the new one over there, and uh, discussed what you should think about when choosing a MIDI controller for yourself. So I really hope you got some value from this video. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio. Mm -hmm.